University in Galena, Illinois. I'm a chemistry major, pre-med, and uh, I will be a senior this year, and I am uh, in Dr. Borman's lab for my internship. And I'm studying the effects of cyclophosphamide on fertility using a murine model. In 2014, around 855,000 new cancers will be diagnosed in male patients in the United States. In adolescents, over 2,600 new cancers will be diagnosed. However, with new technology in chemotherapy and radiation treatments, the survival rate of patients has increased from 50% in the 1970s to almost 70% in the 2000s. Patients with testicular cancer and lymphoma have cure rates as high as 90%. These new technologies have led to efforts that will improve the patient's quality of life after treatment. Due to the harshness of cancer treatments, around 15 to 30 percent of cured patients become infertile. Consequently, a main focus of current research is preserving reproductive function. Sperm banking is the most effective method to preserve fertility in males. In 2005, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine Ethics Committee and the American Society of Clinical Oncology have recommended that doctors inform their patients about fertility preservation methods before the beginning of cancer treatment. However, oncologists do not always offer their patients fertility preservation options. Therefore, some men present for emergency semen cryopreservation, usually after receiving their first chemotherapy dose, with a desire to maintain fertility after treatment. Currently, there are no guidelines that help counsel patients on the consequences of preserving sperm that has been exposed to chemotherapeutic agents. The possible consequences of using compromised samples include genetic mutation of sperm, which can lead to problems in pregnancy and birth defects. This project aims to fill the gap in these guidelines. The objectives of this study are to determine if there is a change in fertility potential after a single non-ablative dose of chemotherapy, to determine if there are alterations in semen analysis parameters after exposure to chemotherapeutic agents and to determine if there are genetic consequences in eight cell embryos fertilized by sperm exposed to chemotherapeutic agents. We are interested in the eight cell stage because this is the stage at which embryos are implanted during in vitro fertilization in fertility clinics. This is the model we used for our experiment. 18 mice are split into two groups. Six of these mice were left as controls, while 12 underwent surgery to remove their right epididymis. Six of these mice, along with all six controls, were given saline, while the other six mice were given cyclophosphamide, a common chemotherapy drug, at 200 milligrams per kilogram. Three mice of each group were sacrificed after one week after their first dose, and their testes and left epididymis were removed. The other three mice were sacrificed eight weeks after their first dose, receiving a total of five doses. The same tissues were removed from these animals. To predict if there would be a loss of fertility, I first looked at the stem cells present in the testes. Stem cells are found around the basement membrane of the seborrheic tubules in the testes and can be expressed using immunohistochemistry and hematoxylin and eosin staining. By comparing the staining of the testes tissue samples, before and after chemotherapy, it, is, it can be determined whether or not fertility will return. If stem cells are absent from the seminiferous tubules after chemotherapy, infertility will be permanent. If stem cells are present after chemotherapy, we can infer that fertility will return after a period of time. However, sperm cells may have abnormalities from treatment. To mark stem cells in immunohistochemistry, I used a SAL4 antibody. I will also use SYCP3 antibody to determine the presence of sp primary spermatocytes. Here are the SAL4 staining and hematoxylin eosins for the one week groups. The first two columns are the groups that received one dose of saline, and the last column received one dose of chemotherapy. It's clear from the SAL4 immunohistochemistry that there are still stem cells present after one dose of cyclophosphamide. SAL4 Marshall cells are shown in green around the basement membrane in the images on the bottom row. This suggests that any loss in fertility potential is only temporary and will return to its previous level after a period of time. These results are supported by the h &E's on the same tissue samples, which show that sperm was present in the tubules after the chemotherapy was administered. The sperm is found in the center of the tubules. Here, here. 
The results of the staining for the five dose groups are shown in this table. The hematopsilin and eosins of these groups show that there is still sperm present in the tubules of the group that received five doses of chemotherapy on the far right. There were also stem cells present in all three groups, indicating no loss of fertility potential. Again, cell four mark cells are shown in green on the bottom row and are located along the basement membrane of the tubules. In the near future, I will also begin immunohistochemistry with an SYCP3 antibody. SYCP3 marks primary spermatocytes and is found in the lateral elements of the synaphenemal complex. SYCP is shown in green in the diagram and is important in connecting chromosomes during meiosis. We predict that after chemotherapy, there will be a marked reduction in SYCP3 staining due to a loss of primary spermatocytes. I also plan to look at the sperm samples from both the pre- and post-treatment groups to determine if they contain any abnormal morphologies. This could be due to a chromosomal abnormality and could lead to problems with fertilization, embryo development, implantation, and pregnancy outcomes. Compared to normal sperm, abnormal sperm may have two heads, two tails, microheads, problems with the acrosome, and many other defects. While many of these sperm would not be able to fertilize an egg through traditional fertilization, techniques such as intracytoplasmic sperm injection allow for the injection of sperm directly into the egg. This means that when assisted reproductive technology or techniques are used, the chromosomal defects found in abnormal sperm could lead to defects in the embryo. Finally, we plan to compare the genomics of eight cell embryos using exome sequencing. These embryos were fertilized by both non-exposed and cyclophosphamide exposed sperm. This will help determine whether the possibly abnormal sperm are capable of producing abnormal embryos. The consequences in eight cell embryos are significant because fertility clinics implant embryos at this stage during in vitro fertilization. Therefore, any abnormalities at this stage could lead to birth defects. Because they are not aware of their options prior to treatment, some men present after one round of chemotherapy for emergency semen cryopreservation in order to preserve fertility after cancer treatment ends. However, there are no guidelines on what the consequences might be when chemotherapy excused sperm is used. Based on this study, there is no loss in fertility potential after one dose of cyclophosphamide, a common chemotherapy drug, or after multiple doses. Future studies will include semen analysis and embryo analysis to determine if sp sperm exposed to chemotherapy contains abnormalities that would lead to problems in pregnancy, embryo development, and birth defects. I would like to thank Dr. Kyle Orwig and the rest of the Orwig lab, especially Dr. Matrika Johnson, for helping me with my project.